I'm trying to think of a title for this video, and I think that the appropriate title is going to be something like why you shouldn't buy a Japanese knife or why you should never own a Japanese knife because I think these people who abuse their knives this way, and you guys will see, <laughs> if you guys haven't seen the previous or come with some of the previous unboxings, the people will really abuse their knives. And I think this is going to be just as bad as some of those videos. So let's just open this up, have a look, and uh, I'll announce what I'll do with these knives once I see the condition that they're in, and uh, we'll go from there. Are you ready? Okay, so this one here... Um, I want to say this is actually a Shun. Uh, yes, it's a Shun Hero. Ooh, and it has a pretty nasty little crack on the cutting edge. And I will do my best to actually get a camera to show you guys. But it looks pretty nasty. It's got this nasty little... I don't know how you would do that on a knife. But people abuse their knives in ways uh, <laughs> I never thought possible until I started opening these boxes. And uh, man, uh, it's a $300 knife. This is a Mac. Oh my goodness, it's got a missing tip. This is the Mac Pro as well, I believe. It's the, one of the higher end knives with the Granton edge on the uh, the profile. I'm not a fan of the Granton edge. I mean, the rest of the knife looks really clean. It looks like a brand new knife, but oh my goodness, there's like a three millimeter, four millimeter chip or tip missing from the tip. Tip missing from, uh, the tip is missing from this knife. <laughs> so it looks like another Shun Hero. Ah, uh, ouch. Ouch, look at these dings on this thing. So there are two pretty big gouges on the cutting edge. Uh, yeah, so this is like uh, missing two millimeters from the cutting edge, this little ding here. Oh, such a beautiful knife. I mean, it's a really gorgeous SG2 core steel. Um, you know, a wonderful, wonderful pack of handle. This is a very good knife. And this is one of the few knives from Shun that I really, really like, but I don't know how people abuse their knives this way. <laughs> it breaks my heart. This looks like a cleaver. Ah, oh, jeez. Yikes, that's a cleaver Enzo, or an Enzo cleaver, a cleaver from Enzo. Oh my goodness, that is a pretty bad, really bad chip on this thing. Looks like, uh, yeah, it's about three millimeters deep or so. And there's a whole bunch of dents on the cutting edge. So, you know, this repair is going to involve removing stock from the entire cutting profile, at least three to four. It's kind of hard to say. One of the dents on the very top actually goes fairly deep into the blade profile. So it looks like I'll have to remove about five millimeters of material from the cutting edge. And it will still be a cleaver, but it's gonna have the height of, <laughs> of more of a, a tall nakiri after it's done. Uh, but the rest of the knife looks really nice. But what a shame. Man, what a shame. Ooh, yee, we have a Shun, a Shun Damascus uh, Asian cook's knife. And it's got a, uh, yeah, gouge on the cutting edge. Not pretty, but definitely not the worst I've seen. It's about a millimeter, millimeter and a half deep or so. Oh, Shun Dual Core. And I'm not a fan of the, some of the Shun boxes, the way they have their knives lined up. Okay, let's see what we got. Ooh, yikes. Oh, man. So it's a Hinosuke, which I don't know why you would make a Shun Dual Core a Hinosuke because in those case, you will hit bone, and these, you know, they use this, uh, they use a really bizarre blend of, I think, VG10 and VG2. It's a really fragile blade. Uh, I don't know, it's not the smartest design decision, in my very humble opinion, but it's about a two millimeter nick, and I don't think this is, I don't know, if this is from bone or not, but it's a pretty bad chip, or pretty bad nick into the blade. Yeah. 
Uh, it's gonna look almost like a paring knife when this is done. Oh, a very small utility knife. Okay, we got a shun. Oh man, it's a six inch Kuritsuke. And uh, it's been used quite a bit. And uh, it's not, it's, it's got a chip right in the middle. It's like a, maybe one millimeters deep, but it's like five or six millimeters wide. So it's got a really bizarre uh, kind of groove happening at the cutting edge. But very pretty knife. I mean, uh, the, after it's been sharpened, I think once I do the reprofiling this knife, clean it up, it's gonna be a really nice knife. Okay, another shoon here. This is the classic eight inch chef knife. Oh dear, now that, <laughs> that is what I'm used to seeing on these knives. Oh my goodness, that is a bad chip. Wow, it looks like someone took a bite <laughs> out of this cutting edge. Oh, and then there's a couple of dents uh, on the top uh, third. But man, that's a pretty big chip or gouge you've got going on there, big fella. Oh, here's a shoon. Oh, wow. Jeez. <laughs> you look at this thing. I'm speechless. I don't know how you damage a knife this badly. Oh my goodness. You can see the core steel. Uh, you can, this is terrible. Oh my goodness. It is, it makes me so mad sometimes when I see knives like this. And you know, even though this is a shoon, the way this knife has been treated, I think no knife would have survived. I mean, I don't care if you put a Wusthof or another, uh, you know, German steel Zwilling or something, no knife would have survived whatever this knife went through. So even though this is a shoon that I'm holding, uh, don't hold it against shoon in Japanese knives. This is just user abuse, 100%, I guarantee you. Thanks to my friends over at Cutlery and More for sending these damaged knives here. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll offer all these, these knives either in their damaged form or in their restored form to my um, subscribers on Patreon. So I will announce that on Patreon pretty soon. Um, but yeah, so this is gonna be exciting. So I'll focus a lot of the remaining uh, you know, videos I have for the rest of the year on knife reviews and on repairs and restorations. I think that'd be, for me, a lot of fun because I love restoring knives and I'll use different techniques for every knife. And so we'll explore different ways to how to restore a knife like this, uh, either on a machine like Tormek or on a whetstone as well. So uh, it takes a lot more work and time repairing this sort of a damaged knife on a whetstone, but I love doing that. And um, so you guys will see some of the processes that I'll I'll use and uh, how to maintain the nice profile, uh, doing it by hand and all that good stuff. So yes, uh, what else do I have going on? Ooh, yes. Okay, so a really quick announcement. I have uh, about 10 of these sharpening ponds that I've made here. And I have 10 that have a really ugly gluing uh, around the edges because I was trying to train somebody to actually come in and um, assemble these for me. So anyways, the gluing up process was not very pretty and so I salvaged them. They work and are functional 100%, but the gluing, I couldn't remove all the gluing to re-glue it. And so I basically just uh, masked everything up and covered up all the nasty uh, glue that was spilling out of the crevices. So I have 10 of them here and uh, I will offer these for free. So basically anyone who buys a pond at the posting of this video will get a free pond included in that shipment. Um, I've got a huge project that I'm working on right now and it requires me to clear out basically half of my garage space. And so that's why I'm trying to get rid of everything. The cost of the actual ponds are actually more than what I'm selling them for, but uh, I just need to clear them out at this point. Okay, here's a question for you guys. What possible thing could anyone have done to damage a knife this badly? Um, I'm just trying to think, what else could you have done? I mean, dropping the knife on its tip, I mean, you had to drop it from like a height of 10 feet or higher. Uh, maybe this knife went into the garbage disposal. I mean, I don't know what could have done 
this sort of damage to a knife. 